Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Raleen Marks. This is the Israel Brief. If you're tuning in for the first time, welcome to our growing family. And as always, we are brought to you by Lay of the Land, where we bring you your top stories, making headlines every Monday to Thursday. Except, of course, if there is Chag, like uh, there has been this week with uh, Pesach or Passover, and uh, we take a little bit of a break. But, you know, we love speaking to you guys. We love interacting with you. And really, through the last 202 days, because that's how long this war with Hamas has been so far, you guys have really given us um, such strength, such comfort, and I thank you all from the bottom of my heart. So before we get into uh, the weekend, let's take a look at those top stories. It is extremely hot in Israel. Tel Aviv earlier today registered a record high temperature of 40.7 degrees. Now that is Celsius. I have no idea what that is in, in Fahrenheit. All I can say is hot, damn hot. So let's take a look at those top stories and we begin with news that last night Hamas released another propaganda or psychological warfare video on their Telegram channel. This time it was a video of a kidnapped dual Israeli American citizen Hirsch Goldberg Paulin. Now Hirsch's parents John and Rachel have been absolutely exceptional campaigning every single day for uh, to bring awareness not just to Hirsch but also the highlight uh, the the situation that the hostages are under. There are six American civilians being held hostage by Hamas. This is something that's not spoken about e enough. And, and in the video, we could see Hirsch, who had his left uh, arm shot off uh, from uh, below the from below the elbow uh, on the seventh of October. We could see him. Um, I have to tell you. I won't watch the video because I won't uh, play Hamas's propaganda game, but I did see the, the stills from it and um, I think the look in his eyes will, will stay with me for a very, very long time, if not forever. And we must understand that hostages do these videos under extreme, extreme duress. You could see he has lost a lot of weight. He, his hair was cut very, very close. His, his beard uh, cut in, in, the, in the way that Muslims often cut their beards, very, very um, square. He, he said that, he, you know, he is Hirsch Goldberg Paulin. He was arrested on the 7th of October. We know this is not the case, but when you have a gun to your head, you will say pretty much whatever your captors tell you to say. He spoke about being in captivity for nearly 200 days, so we can assume that this video was recorded recently. He mentioned that Israelis will be celebrating a festival, but they won't be. He spoke about being held in the dark without food, water or air since being taken captive. And he also blamed uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu and his government for not doing uh, uh, anything to release the hostages and said that they must be kicked out of government. Now, of course, we know that these videos are done under extreme duress. His parents released a statement shortly after that saying, Hirsch, if you can hear this, we love you. This is the first time we've heard your voice. Stay strong and survive. It's very, very hard to, to talk about this without just uh, bursting into tears. Hirsch's father, John, said earlier today, we did not know if our son was alive until yesterday. So it, it, it's proof of life and it gives the family hope. And of course, we call on everybody to please do what they can to ensure the safe and speedy release of our remaining hostages. It has been 202 days, 133 hostages are still held captive by terror organization Hamas in their tunnels. This week we have been focusing a lot on university campuses uh, across the country and um, all we can say is that the Ivy League universities, Columbia, Yale, Harvard, have actually now become poison Ivy League universities. So we do have some, some updates. 
Hamas have said that they support the protest, calling it the freedom of speech, which is quite ironic, seeing that Gazans have no freedom of speech. They say that we support the protest against neo-Nazi Zionists. No, I'm not making this up. This is what they said. The protest also got the endorsement of the Iran uh, Ayatollah Al Khamenei as well as the PFLP. So when terrorists and terrorist sponsors are supporting your protests, maybe you're on the wrong side of history. Meanwhile, the University of Texas has started with protests, but the governor of Texas, Greg Abbott, sent in st uh, Texan state troopers on horseback and 34 were arrested. He, he stopped that protest before it even started. He said that protesters belong in jail and there will be no tolerance of anti-Semitism in the state of Texas, something we hope will resonate across other states in the United States. What we are seeing is very, very frightening. Um, not only are we seeing the brainwashed hordes, uh, there, there is a, a clip doing the rounds on, on social media of a protester being asked why and what is she protesting for. And she actually says, I have no idea. Uh, but we know that there are real, real uh, bad instigators among the protesters on campus. Meanwhile, New York's Mayor Eric Adams says it's time to look into who is funding these protests. He says all these tents, everything seems to look very, very organized and all looks the same. It's time to follow the money trail. Last night, Prime Minister Netanyahu released a, a statement. He said that it's, uh, the, there are horrific scenes on U.S. campuses, he says, that are reminiscent of scenes from 1938 Nazi Germany. He said that while federal officials are handling things differently, they need to be doing more. He said that those who call for the death to Israel and death to America, we know this does not end well. This has very, very dangerous consequences. And uh, he, he thanked those in authority for fighting this. And, 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 you know, whether or not you like Prime Minister Netanyahu or don't, his words really, really are historical uh, and, and have a lot of meaning for us here. Uh, as I said to you guys yesterday, I don't know where we go from here. I don't know the day after how we reassure Jewish students, communities around the world that they are safe uh, and that they are part of society. Because what we have seen in the last now nearly seven months has been absolutely horrific. Staying with Hamas, and Khalil al Hayan, a Hamas uh, official, has said that the terror organization is prepared to recognize a two-state solution and lay down its arms for five years, as long as Israel withdraws to the 1967 borders. Do we believe Hamas? Absolutely not. Not only does the Hamas charter radically call for the extermination of the state of Israel and for the genocide of Jews around the world, something you can see uh, that they carried out on the 7th of October, and you certainly hear it in the language of their supporters on, on campuses. But uh, this is all part of Hamas's psychological warfare, not just against Israelis, but against you as well, lulling you into a false sense of security. So sorry, uh, Mr. al Haya, we don't believe a word you're saying. And finally, President Biden has met four-year-old Avigail Idan. She was one of the youngest captives taken hostage by Hamas on the 7th of October. Avigail was um, taken hostage when she ran to the neighboring house on Kibbutz Kfar Aza. Her parents were murdered in front of Avigail and her siblings, but before they were slaughtered by Hamas terrorists, her mother managed to hide her siblings in a cupboard where they stayed for hours until the IDF was able to release them from the cupboard. Avigail whose life was spared because her, her father fell on top of her, protecting her from the slaughter by Hamas, ran to the neighbors, the Brodich family, and from there they were taken captive in Gaza. 
Abigail and her siblings are now with her uncle and aunt and cousin. National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan was with President Biden and they said clearly there is still a lot of work to do and that they are going to work day and night in order to ensure the release of the hostages. There are six U.S. civilians amongst the 133 hostages being held by Hamas. That's it for this week and the Israel Brief. Guys, we all deserve a, a rest uh, this weekend. But before we, we head into the weekend, a reminder to you to check out our website at www.layoftheland.online. Our YouTube channel is right here at the Israel Brief. Please help us grow our community. Do us a solid and hit that red subscribe button. And of course, share. Share as far and wide as possible. We are on um, Facebook at Lottle Site. Our profile picture looks like this. So if you are on Facebook, please look for us and join our community. And we're on X at Lay of the Land 5. I adore you guys. Please take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Chag Sameach. Have a wonderful weekend. Shabbat Shalom. And I will see you again on Monday. Bye for now.